Recently, I shared a video with you lovelies about why you might be ovulating late. And I asked you if you also wanted to see a video about why you might be ovulating early. And you said yes. But you know what? I kind of plan to do this video anyway because I know a lot of you, in fact, ovulate early and you worry what the effects are on your chances of conceiving. So let's talk about that. Hello lovelies and welcome to another one of my videos in which we'll be talking about why you might be ovulating early and what the effects are on your fertility and your chances of conceiving naturally. Let's recap the beginning of this cycle, shall we? Because that way I can explain to you perfectly which hormones are out of whack when you ovulate early. The beginning of your cycle, estrogen is low. The low estrogen is what brings up FSH. FSH is follicle stimulating hormone, and that hormone stimulates a bunch of follicles in both of your ovaries to mature and develop. On day seven, roughly, FSH will peak and a couple of eggs are selected to be matured further. This is what signals to the body to continue to rise estrogen and estrogen further matures those eggs that have been chosen and it also thickens the lining of your uterus so that it becomes nice and lush for a fertilized egg to be implanted in later. As estrogen rises, LH, luteinizing hormone, also starts to rise. And as estrogen peaks, that signals to the body that the eggs are ready and that the endometrial lining is ready enough and that ovulation may happen. So as LH peaks, that is what triggers ovulation. So here is where in that process early ovulation can be caused. First of all, with FSH. If FSH is too high, too quickly, that signals to the body too early and too quickly for estrogen to go up and LH to then go up. So FSH is a follicle stimulating hormone and often FSH is very high premenopausal because estrogen is constantly low when you are premenopausal. You see, I explained beginning of the cycle, estrogen is low and that's what brings up FSH. Now, if it's not because it's just the beginning of your cycle, but estrogen generally is low, FSH will continually be high. But in that case, you won't necessarily see early ovulation because FSH doesn't actually quite peak. It's just continually high. And then estrogen cannot really take over anyway because there isn't enough of it. So it's not very likely for you to see early ovulation in premenopausal years except for when it has to do with high estrogen, which happens before that, which I'll mention later on. No, the main reason that we see high FSH is because of fertility drugs, because fertility drugs are given to stimulate your ovaries to produce plenty of eggs because they wanna retrieve as many as possible, right? Now that's when you end up in a situation of hyperstimulation. And the hyperstimulation effect does not often just stay in the cycle that you're taking the drugs, it can last beyond that. So if you're currently taking fertility drugs or you have taken fertility drugs in the past and you are now struggling with early ovulation ever since that happened, it's possible that you're in a situation of hyperstimulation and that's what has brought your FSH up. Now the next step in the cycle, the estrogen that needs to peak, that can also cause early ovulation. Because if estrogen is too high too early, then that signals to the body to bring up LH to release the eggs. Well, perhaps the eggs are not actually mature yet. Too high estrogen is also called estrogen dominance, and I've talked about that on my channel before, so I'll make sure to link in the description and the cards up here some videos. But the gist of it is, first of all, it is a very common, and it has to do with the fact that estrogen dominance can happen after long-term use of the pill. There is a lot of hormones in our water these days, that is to say, in the West, here in Europe, in Northern America, you will see that there's a lot of hormones in the water because we are using the contraceptive pill for a while now, and they can't actually filter that out of the water. Another thing is plastics. We eat and drink so many things out of plastic containers and um, buy foods in plastics, and that leaks into our foods, and plastics are interpreted by our bodies as estrogen. So that can cause estrogen dominance. And then not to mention, 
estrogen dominance can happen with age because before we run out of estrogen reserves around menopause, we actually start to increase more and more and more of it as we age. This is also why a lot of estrogen dominant symptoms start to show up when women are in their 30s. So I'm talking about fibroids, endometriosis, and uh, shorter cycles and early ovulation as another one, but make sure to check out those other videos where I talk about that. And then thirdly, what can be the cause of too early ovulation? That is LH peaks too early. And this is something that will not generally happen in a chronic situation. Because yes, when you struggle with PCOS, you can have continually high LH, but remember to start ovulation, you need to have a peak of LH. So if your body is continually producing high levels of LH, that doesn't signal to the body, hey, we've got a peak, now ovulate. So that's what happens in PCOS, it's just continually high and that's what can cause you to not ovulate at all or to ovulate late. Make sure to check out the video I did last time. However, a sudden peak of LH is definitely possible and research has shown when this happens and that can be in acute stress. And that is a serious type of situation, like a huge shock, a huge trauma. With all the stress hormones that are being released, LH goes up suddenly as well, and a woman can suddenly ovulate early. However, you see how this is not actually something you're going to see every cycle. This is a one-time thing, and you'll be able to pinpoint it for sure. So I would say that the most common reasons that I see with women that are ovulating early is pretty much the estrogen dominance because that is the most common thing. There are so many reasons for having estrogen dominance these days. And then in some cases also the high FSH because some women that come to me already have gone through IVF cycles or have just received injections to stimulate their ovaries to produce more eggs. So when does early ovulation become a problem? Well, that is if you ovulate before day 11. So if you ovulate day 11, 12, don't freak out yet, it's not ideal, but it's really before day 11 that it becomes a problem because the eggs have difficulty maturing properly then. They just didn't have enough time. And an immature egg will have problems being fertilized, implanting properly, and then developing. That is not to say that nobody in the world ever fell pregnant ovulating before day 11, so don't lose hope, but definitely take it seriously. And even when I have patients that ovulate day 11 or 12, we will take that seriously and try to get that to more day 13 or 14. It is of course super important for you to know if you actually do ovulate early. Don't just go by the ovulation test strips because that doesn't tell you that you've ovulated, that only tells you if you're about to ovulate. The only way for you to know if you have ovulated is if you take your temperature. So if you're not 100% sure how to chart or where to get started, make sure to click on a link up here in the cards or down below in the description that leads you to one of my starting videos, the first three steps you need to take to get started charting, and that will take you to my course and to other resources. And then before you know it, you will know exactly how to predict when you're going to be fertile and how to know when you ovulated and if that was too late too early or just right. So now you know what causes early ovulation and when it becomes a concern for your chances of conceiving naturally. Be encouraged that this can absolutely be changed with lifestyle changes, with your type of food, quitting anything with plastics in your environment, and also homeopathic treatments such as homeopathic detoxes of the contraceptive pill, fertility drugs, and yes, also of plastics. I've done that plenty of times with women that are estrogen dominant. I'm not taking on any patients at the moment because I am on maternity leave, as you may know. However, I do intend to offer homeopathic detoxes in the future in a way that I can offer it to a group of you as I've done recently. So if you're interested in that and joining a group in the future, make sure to sign up to my mailing list to be notified the next time that I start a new group. So that's at ingafleur.com slash mailing list. If you want to learn more about estrogen dominance and about hormone imbalance and how you can fix that naturally, make sure to click on the playlist on your screen right now. And if you haven't already subscribed, but you're interested in fertility videos and how to improve your fertility naturally, make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell because I bring out new videos every Thursday. And in the meantime, see you in the next video. Bye.